When severe weather hits Colorado, it can be devastating. Oh, it just hit their barn. That's something I'll, I'll never get over. It'll always come back. From flooding water sweeping through towns to tornadoes ripping across the eastern plains. Colorado is unique in that it gets a lot of different types of tornadoes. To hail damaging cars, even homes and stores across the state. And wind snapping trees, taking out fences, balconies, power poles. There is no shortage of extreme weather here. Cities have systems in place to warn people when severe weather is coming their way, but you need to have a plan in place too. I feel lucky and blessed to still be here because I can almost guarantee you if I'd have stayed home, stayed home. The Nine News weather team is dedicated to providing you the information you need to make informed, timely decisions that keep your family safe during severe weather season. We work diligently using advanced technology to gather the latest, most detailed forecasts on severe storms headed your way. We want to make sure that you have enough time to get to safety. We'll start by explaining severe weather here in Colorado and how it forms. Belinda De Leon shows us. As the days get longer, the days get warmer, giving the key ingredient to fuel thunderstorms. Like clockwork, April through September, between noon and sunset, these storms form when surface temperatures are highest. Thunderstorms typically form in warm and moist air and need three basic ingredients to form. Moisture, unstable air that is warm and can rise rapidly, and a lifting mechanism, like a front. Much like when you heat water on a stove, you start to see the bubbles. That's what happens when the surface of the earth is heated. So convection forms, and sometimes that convection can be strong enough to produce severe weather. A typical Colorado thunderstorm is less than 20 miles in diameter. Wind gusts to 50 miles per hour, hail up to half an inch in diameter, rainfall rate of three quarters of an inch, and frequent lightning. Most thunderstorms can form and then dissipate within about 60 minutes, and that's, that's the typical garden variety thunderstorm that Colorado can get. But certain conditions are more favorable for thunderstorms that can last much longer, say for several hours. Storms that become severe are ones that are the most unstable. That's where the warmest air is beneath the coldest air, and that instability forms a really strong updraft where the warm air rises. And the stronger the updraft, it's the, the better the ability for a storm to generate hail and lightning and those types of things. A severe thunderstorm is considered to have hail up to one inch in diameter or larger, winds with gusts of 58 miles per hour or greater, or a tornado. We also have a unique characteristic to northern Colorado that's pretty much from the Denver metro area north into Weld County that we call the Denver Cyclone. It's a broad circulation, but when you get surface heating on top of that boundary, convection can form, that storms can form right on top of that boundary, and sometimes we can get tornadoes that form as the storm grows. So as the storm is going up, it has a, a quick spin-up tornado that we call a non-supercell tornado. Lightning, hail, tornadoes, flooding, are you ready? Make a preparedness plan to keep your property and family safe when severe weather strikes. Springtime in Colorado, it means violent thunderstorms and tornadoes. We have more tornadoes in the United States than any country in the world, 10 times as many. In Colorado in the month of June, 700 tornadoes reported just since the 1950s. So how is this amazing feat of Mother Nature formed? We'll take you inside, show you the anatomy of a tornado. A tornado is a violently rotating column of air, usually starts at the base of a supercell, goes down to the ground. On the ground is where we see the signature on radar. That is a hook echo that is found on the southern flank of that storm. It's a little appendage that comes out that shows rotation within that cell, which grows that supercell 40, 50, 60,000 feet up into the atmosphere. You have downdraft winds that will pull in some cool air. If it's not too cold, those upper level winds will collide with warm moist air inflowing from the surface. That can create rotation on its own. One of the signatures with a supercell and a tornadic storm is a wall cloud, and that is a shelf that lowers. That can rotate on its own along with the whole storm, but that's also where we'll see the funnel form or the tornado. It's a teeny 
tiny part of this massive storm and the most dangerous part. When you see debris swirling at the surface, dust swirling at the surface, that's where you don't want to be. We can see plants, trees, cars, appliances, houses, even people being rotated around this violent storm and then projectiles out like missiles. Very dangerous scenario playing out and the last place you want to be is underneath that wall cloud with a debris cloud forming at the surface. When it comes to severe weather, the National Weather Service wants you to think, get ready, get set, go when you're listening to the forecast. Our main priority as meteorologists is to give you the best, most accurate information as possible to help keep you and your family safe. When we give you a severe weather outlook, this is the get ready phase. That's when you need to create a plan for the incoming severe weather situation. Build an emergency preparedness kit for when the storm hits and think about where you will go if you need to evacuate. When there is a severe weather watch, it means watch the skies, watch out. This is when you get set. Pay attention to the forecast. We'll try to give you a time frame of when the severe weather is expected to hit your neighborhood. Be ready to implement your severe weather plan. Once a severe weather warning is in place, this is your cue to take action, to go. Take shelter immediately to protect yourself and your family from the impending severe weather. We get all types of severe weather here in Colorado, but hail is one of the most common. In my 15 years of covering weather across the country, the largest hail size I've ever seen come in from the National Weather Service was basketball size. The storm was huge. And while the actual hailstone wasn't quite this big, it did set a national record and is a great reminder of how dangerous and damaging hail can be. The National Weather Service uses everyday objects to compare hail size. Some of the smaller sizes are dime, penny, nickel, and quarter. In Colorado, a storm is considered severe if it's producing hail that's quarter size or larger. Large storms produce very strong updrafts or rapidly rising air. As air rises, it cools. And in the case of a thunderstorm, rising air can cool enough to turn water droplets into ice, otherwise known as hail. In a severe thunderstorm, the updraft is so strong it repeatedly lifts that hail up into the storm, adding layers and layers of ice. The hail falls when the updraft can no longer support its weight. Hail season along the Front Range is from April through October. Residents here can count on three or four catastrophic hailstorms every year. And according to the Rocky Mountain Insurance Information Association, that means up to one half of your homeowner's insurance premium may be going toward hail and wind damage costs. Making sure you have right insurance in place is extremely important. So after you protect yourself from that storm, protect your pocketbook and contact your insurance agency right away. The first thing you need to do is document, document, document. Get out the cell phone, take some photographs, videos of that damage, um, write it down, detail it for your insurance adjuster to come out. Walker says to also take a deep breath. It may be tempting to fix the damage immediately, but she recommends you coordinate with your insurance company and get several quotes to fix your property. Another dangerous element we need to watch out for during severe weather season is lightning. It can be deadlier than tornadoes this time of year. Marty Coniglio explains the electric threat and what you need to know to prevent it from striking you. It's so common we get used to it, lightning, thunderstorms here in Colorado, but there may be a lot that you do not know about one of Colorado's most deadly weather events. We live in an electrical world. I mean, we get hit by about 50 to 100 strikes of lightning every second. And we're talking about billions of strikes a year. How does such a huge amount of electrical charge build? Inside the cloud, we have to have vertical motion, and that vertical motion is bringing 
water particles and ice particles in contact with each other and they're shedding electrons. It's much easier for the ice to shed the electrons than it is for water. And so ice will become positively charged and the water will become negatively charged and the ice then will be lighter and go to the top of the cloud and become a positive anvil and the negative ions in the water and the grapple will kind of be at the base of the cloud creating a very strong negative charge at the base of the cloud. The different charges can create different types of lightning. All the negative bolts are coming from the base of the cloud and they'll be hitting the ground. While up at the top of the storm, which can be over 50,000 feet, even more powerful, positive bolts can form. Now, there's a couple of reasons why these are so much more dangerous. One is that for the lightning bolt to overcome the insulating properties of the air from the top of the cloud, it has to have a much higher voltage and much higher charge for it to come across that distance. These strikes carry an incredible amount of electricity. Oftentimes the positive bolts are about 10 times more powerful. They last about 10 times longer than the negative strikes. A negative stroke of lightning will have about 30,000 amps, whereas a positive stroke will have about 300,000 amps. Um, we're talking about millions of volts. And a positive stroke is the most likely to take you by surprise. These bolts out of the blue are coming from the top of the cloud, and they can go anywhere from five to maybe seven miles away from the core of the storm. And so you might not be experiencing clouds or even rain at the time when a lightning bolt could come down and make contact with you or the surface near you. The danger from lightning comes from both the electricity and the intense heat. The thing is that lightning is super hot. It's anywhere between 15 to 50,000 degrees Fahrenheit when the bolt comes down. Now, keep in mind that the surface of the sun is 10,000 degrees. Admittedly, the interior of the sun is about 27 million degrees, so it's not hotter than the sun itself, but it's hotter than the surface of the sun. Both elements carry their own dangers. For example, if it hits a transformer, the heat is not gonna be that much of a factor on the transformer, but the electrical current will blow that transformer up. Now, when we as, as human beings get hit by lightning, we suffer from both of the impacts. We suffer from the heat, we get burn marks on our bodies, but there are neurological issues that can uh, develop from the electrical capacity coming through your body. And so you can do nerve damage, um, brain damage from the electrical aspect as well. So for the human component, really both of them are very uh, debilitating for, for us because we can get damaged by the heat and by the electrical current. On average, we have three deaths and dozens of injuries every year due to lightning. Can you be safe? We've got a pretty good understanding of lightning these days, and so we know how to protect against it. So if you're in a, a modern building, odds are that it's going to be grounded. And a, a modern commercial structure, or even modern homes that are grounded, are very safe places to be. But you still need to take precautions. We say that houses are a safe place to be, and they are. But there's some places that you want to avoid in a home. For example, you don't want to be in a shower during a lightning storm because uh, the lightning can hit the home, get to the pipes. Water's also a good conductor, so you could end up getting electrocuted while you're in your shower. There truly is no safe place outdoors during a lightning storm. So if you can't get inside... A car is a very safe place to be because there's a metal cage around you. It creates what we call a Faraday cage. And so it might be very loud if you get hit by uh, a bolt of lightning in the car. You'll be safe from the heat and the voltage of that lightning bolt. We do live in an electrical world. With knowledge and awareness, we can all raise our odds of staying safe during storm season. There are things you can do to keep yourself safe, and it's very important. In the last 36 years, we've had 96 people killed in Colorado due to lightning and at least 471 injuries, and a lot of folks believe that the injuries are underreported. One thing you have to know, there is no safe place to be outdoors. You have to get in to shelter, and if you can hear thunder, you are in a location where lightning can strike. You have to get to an enclosed shelter and don't lie flat on the ground to make yourself lower. That puts your heart on the ground and puts you at risk for a heart attack. Car can offer some protection. The frame of your car acts as what is called a Faraday cage to move lightning about. Keep your windows closed and don't touch those metal surfaces. When you're at home, stay away from porches, windows and doors. Don't lie on concrete floors or walls and avoid sinks faucets, bath, or showers, because all of those things conduct electricity if it strikes your home. Snow in Colorado could be the key to improving forecasts. 
NASA just launched a new project in the Grand Mesa area. We'll explain how snow and space mix, how it could advance technology used to measure snowpack, and what this means to you. seen plenty of snow across Colorado this winter and NASA is using it to set up sensors and test out new ways to measure the snowpack. More than 100 scientists from across the world are working on a snow satellite mission. Meteorologist Danielle Grant explains what it's all about. Water. We all need it to survive. About one out of every six people on planet Earth depend uh, in in the majority depend on uh, water from snow to get their water for drinking, for agriculture, and so forth. So it's really vital. That's why NASA is testing a combination of sensors from the ground and air to see how they can best collect snow water measurements from space. This multi-year project is called Snow X, and it's happening in our backyard. We had aircraft flying for three weeks and uh, about 100 people on the ground collecting what we call ground truth. Edward Kim is one of the leading scientists of the project. They chose to conduct this campaign over the Grand Mesa because of its diverse terrain. Two teams of data wranglers have been taking measurements from high in the sky to shuffling through the snow on skis. The different instruments on the aircraft were used to make different kinds of measurements using different techniques. And the folks on the ground were collecting actual measurements of what the, you know, how much snow was really there, for example. While satellites show snow cover, they don't adequately show the amount of water in the snowpack, something that would dramatically improve weather forecasts. Knowing how much water you're going to be able to capture, knowing when it's going to melt and come down out of the snowpack uh, and end up in, 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 your, in your rivers or your reservoirs, uh, is is a key part of what NASA is trying to do. Trying to get one step closer in identifying how much water is out there and how it'll impact the world, all from the farthest reaches of space. Danielle Grant, Nine News. a tornado ripped through southeastern Colorado without warning. One woman was killed, 35 homes were destroyed in the town of Holly. We spoke to one couple as they dug through the rubble of what used to be their family home. Nine News reporter Noel Brennan and photojournalist Ann Herbst went back to the Calma family 10 years later. It kind of makes you appreciative of, you know, today. As seasons change and years pass. It's hard to believe it's been 10 years. Time is measured by moments. It just changed everything here. It really did. The biggest moments. It'll be 10 years, March the 28th. Holly, Colorado remembers like yesterday. Oh, it was just immense, just the big funnel. And just went straight north where we, what we say, through the park. Went down. Uh, on the north side of town. And destroyed many rainy homes in the country, too. On a Wednesday night 10 years ago. Yeah, it was Wednesday. Holly had no warning. Nobody thought about a tornado in March. I didn't. It was Bible study night for Peggy and Jim Kalma. Yeah, I told her, I'm too tired. I'm not going to well, go Well, we got tonight. a new trap and field. Yeah. And a husband's magazine was no match for a wife's persistence. So he decided to keep peace in the family. He followed me out the door. Out the door and out of the path of an F4 tornado. I feel lucky and blessed to still be here because I can almost guarantee you if I'd have stayed home. Stayed home. To see your, your community destroyed is hard. You know, you couldn't sit down and say, whoa me, because it was the whole community. These moments became memories. Yeah, these are all pictures of, of what happened. The Kalmas keep. No place to hide here. Thank you, Lord, that we weren't here. <laughs> Captions detail what was lost. Jim's pickup is vacuum packed. A card. We got this picture in the mail. Reminds them what was found. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's my grandson. 
<laughs> so that's Nathan. A family photo traveled by tornado. This is where they found it. Here's St. Francis, Kansas. Blown 150 miles, it came home. It's just the, the Lord's will, you know. Their faith was always strong. It's just amazing. But Jim and Peggy never expected the help. You know, Lahata, Ulysses. That came from so far away. Everybody helped everybody. And we had so many people here helping. Renews your faith in, in your fellow man. It was just amazing. You don't see a town come together until something tragic happens. A decade has passed and a town was rebuilt. Everything is before tornado or after tornado. You know, it, it changes. It's, it's a line. It's a break. Moments are now memories. I'm just thankful we were gone. So the good Lord took care of us. Holly is still home. I think it, it brought this community even closer. With photojournalist Ann Herbst, Noel Brennan, Nine News. Severe weather definitely top of mind for us this time of year as we watch the radar every day. The severe storms, the most dangerous weather that we see this time of year begins in mid-May and peaks in early June. Now is the time to start preparing. We want to continue serving you as your trusted weather source. On behalf of the entire Nine News weather team, we thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for joining us.